Joined now by tonight's panel to discuss the news of the day, Liberal Senator James Patterson and Sky News host Carolyn Marcus. Good evening to both of you. Good evening, Good evening. Porto. Let's start off with Prime Minister Scott Morrison, who met with the ABC boss Ida Buttrose in Sydney today. This comes after federal police raids on the national broadcaster and also on Annika Smethurst, the political correspondent from News Corp. I'll start off with you, if I can, Senator. Uh, does the ABC have a point here that press freedom is under attack? Well, Ben, I think that the responsible thing to do in response to the events of last week is to call an inquiry, a parliamentary inquiry of some type, to examine the underlying policy issues here, the legislative issues here. Um, I think some of the rhetoric has been over the top uh, over the past week, and I would account Ida Buttrose's uh, rhetoric among that. Um, she said that the um, warrants being executed on the ABC uh, last week were deliberately designed to intimidate. Um, now, as far as I know, she hasn't said uh, who she believes deliberately designed it, um, whether it was the AFP, uh, whose job it is just to enforce the law, uh, whether it's politicians who don't direct the AFP operationally, or whether it was someone else. But um, my view is that uh, press freedom is a very substantive issue that should be taken seriously, and an inquiry would be the best path uh, to get to the heart of those issues. And you think Ida's reaction to those raids were overblown? Well, I think the, the comment that it was deliberately designed, I can't imagine um, what she meant by that, and it hasn't been substantiated to my knowledge. It's also been reported publicly that um, Ms Buttrose was going to ask the Prime Minister or the Communications Minister to make a commitment that there would be no um, further warrants executed by the AFP on the ABC. Um, now, that is not possible because politicians do not direct the AFP, and nor would we want to live in a country where they did. Um, do we really want to be in a country where a politician can make a guarantee that no matter what happens in the future, no matter what crimes might be committed, the uh, police will not take action because a politician will tell them not to? Um, that would be a very uh, worrying path to go down. So I don't think that that's something that um, will be promising uh, the ABC. Carolyn, it was a bit of a crazy week. We had Annika Smithhurst from News Corp raided at home on Tuesday morning. Then we had the ABC raided on Wednesday. Now meetings between the ABC bosses and the Prime Minister and the Communications Minister this afternoon. Where's all this going to end? Well, it might end in an inquiry, as uh, the senators just put forward. But, uh, look, I have to disagree with James. I think that, uh, that they were designed to intimidate. When you have a situation like Annika Smethurst's, the raid on her home, not even her office, but her home, that lasts for seven and a half hours, when uh, AFP officers are going through her underwear drawer, the conclusion, you can't come to an, any other conclusion other than this is a, a tactic that is designed to intimidate not just the journalists, but the whistleblowers who are speaking to the journalists. Now, I take the point that it's uh, that the government may not have ordered this raid, that the AFP makes their own decisions in this, but I still think that there, there were some intimidation tactics that were used, and it's a really chilling time for journalists. You, you pick up on an interesting point. It was a curious place to begin the raid at home, wasn't it, when you're dealing with work-related issues, work computers, work correspondence. Why kick it off at home? Um, exactly. I mean, they could have raided her office in the Canberra Press Gallery, where she's likely to have kept information in relation to the story. But remember, this is a story that was published, I think, some 18 months ago, uh, certainly a long time ago, and they've chosen to go through her home. They looked at every page of her cookbook. They looked in her knickers drawers. Um, this would have been incredibly confronting. But I appreciate the police have a job to do, and they have to, if they're going to do a search and a raid, They've got to search the place thoroughly. And national security is, of course, an important issue as well. Let's bring in John Setka, who is under pressure to resign from the CFMMEU over allegations he harassed a woman and also comments that he made about Rosie Batty. Now, a short time ago, John Setka has given an, inter an interview to Samantha Maiden at the New Daily where he says, uh, people are making up lies about what I said. Every time I see Rosie Batty... I want to give her a hug. I'd rather be called corrupt. Uh, it's not even an exaggeration of what I said. It's an outright lie. This is dirty politics and this is wrong. I've got the utmost respect for Rosie Batty. It's sickening to me. Albo wants to expel me for that. Please. It sounds, Carolyn, like he is not going to give up without a fight. No, he's not going to take this lying down, is he? But, look, I wasn't at that meeting, so I don't know exactly what John Setka said, but he does have form in this area. We, we saw, as you pointed out at the start of the program, the comments that he made about building inspectors and, and bringing their kids into it, basically threatening that he's going to... that union 
thugs were going to turn up in people's neighbourhoods in, in the local footy club and make their kids embarrassed to be associated with their parents. Uh, he, he's um, been charged with harassing a woman, sending her a barrage of text messages, profanity laden. Uh, this is a, a bloke who does not have the best reputation. I'm surprised it's taken this long for someone to do something about it. And, and credit to Albo for actually taking that step. Senator Patterson, do you agree with that? Even though he's saying tonight John Setker is not going to be going easily, he won't give up without a fight. If Bill Shorten was the leader of the Labor Party, I can't really imagine that he would have moved on John Setka today like Anthony Albanese did. Does Albo deserve some credit for that? Well, I don't think it's particularly remarkable that finally someone in the Labor Party has said when it comes to John Setka, enough is enough. But I think it is remarkable that this was the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, he's made some pretty offensive comments about Rosie Batty and no doubt deserves to be condemned for that. But this is a person who's been charged dozens of times with, with serious crimes, who's been convicted many times with, of serious crimes, including assaulting a police officer. So in the modern Labor Party, Assaulting a police officer, perfectly fine, not a problem. Keep uh, being a Labor Party member, brother. Uh, but say something that's not very nice about Rosie Batty, you're out. I mean, it's just a very warped uh, set of priorities from the modern Labor Party. Sally McManus, the ACTU boss, has come out today, Senator, saying he must go. It took her a while to say it, but she did come out and say it today. I, I'm, I'm interested to hear from some of the members of the CFM MEU, some of the other leadership team there, because... I don't hear too much from them about how they feel being represented by this clown. Well, Sally McManus's position today is different to what her position was 24 hours ago when she put out a statement saying that she couldn't possibly comment uh, on Mr Setka's behavioural comments because there was an ongoing court matter. Um, you don't need an ongoing court matter to look at this person's rap sheet. It's the long, one of the longest rap sheets in this game. Um, he has made a virtue of breaking the law and, in fact, Sally McManus has previously defended him and his union breaking the law as a necessary evil in order to pursue their aims. Um, so it's pretty convenient for the union movement and the Labor Party to finally decide that he's done something that's beyond the pale. Um, but what they were willing to stand by, what they were willing to put up with over all these years, I think continues to reflect very poorly on them. Gender fluidity. Let's move on to an issue which, until a few years ago, hadn't really been something that was talked about all that much, let alone been a discussion point in classrooms around the country. But today, the Vatican has come out and issued an official document rejecting the idea that people can choose their gender. They say this is an attempt to annihilate nature. Can I ask your response, first of all, Senator Patterson? Uh, my general view on this, I'm not a religious person, um, Ben, is that uh, questions like this are, are medical questions by and large. They're not theological questions. I don't object to the Catholic Church expressing a view and having a view. Um, they're perfectly entitled to do that um, in a free society, and I, I strongly defend their right to do that. But, but ultimately, I think, certainly when it comes to any public policy questions in this area, um, it, it's the medical advice that I'll be taking rather than the theological advice. Carolyn, I think they're just putting down in black and white what they probably already believe in and what they already preach, but you can understand why there are some groups out there who find this terribly confronting. Well, especially as they put this out during Pride Month, I think some people are questioning the timing of it. But having said that, you're right. This is nothing that should surprise anyone. I mean, the, the Catholic Church believes in creationism. It, obviously, Adam and Eve, a man and a woman created by God, uh, they're not going to be coming out and having any very liberal views on uh, transgenderism. And I agree with James. I think that the Catholic Church, the Vatican, should have a right to express it beliefs in this area as in any other area where it's their honestly held religious beliefs and obviously people have a right to come out and say they're upset by them and, and criticise them and say they go against what we know in modern science. So Senator if it's up to the medical fraternity to decide these things and they are currently deciding that it is possible that people are able to change genders then you support that whole notion? Well, Ben, I know a few people who are transgender. Um, by and large, they haven't had a very easy road in life and dealing with a gender transition is um, not an easy thing at all. Um, I think these people deserve our compassion um, and our understanding uh, and, uh, and I think we should respect um, the way they choose to present in the world. Um, if they feel that um, the gender that they were born in, uh, the body that they were born in, is not their true gender and they want to change that, well, then I think that's a matter for them. Let's move on to some, f some football right now because there's an AFL fan that was kicked out of a match between Carlton and Brisbane over the weekend. And when I heard that they had said something to an umpire, I thought, oh, we're going to have another 
Adam Good's situation here where there's been some kind of race-based comment that had been made, but no. Uh, this fan called one of the umpires a bald-headed flog. And it begs the question, Carolyn, is that fair enough? Or are we getting a little bit too soft when someone can be punted from a game of AFL from the crowd for calling an umpire a bald-headed flog? Honestly, what is next? They're going to ban booing at sporting games? I mean, obvious, I think being able to abuse an umpire as a bald-headed flog is part of your God-given right <laughs> as a sports fan. You should be able to have a go, as long as it's not a homophobic, racist uh, remarks. And, and it wasn't in this well, What case, about being know? discriminatory against bald people? Indeed. There's, there's Indeed. nothing wrong with being bald. Are you saying there is, Ben? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being gay. There's nothing wrong with being black. There's nothing wrong with being white. Senator, can you jump in here and talk some sense into both of us? Is there anything wrong with someone abusing an umpire and saying that the ump is a bald-headed bald flog? Perhaps, Ben, there's a spate of uh, bigotry and discrimination against bald-headed people that I'm not aware of that needs decisive action um, from our sporting codes to prevent it from spreading like wildfire throughout the community. I don't know. Um, a, a mate of mine who's a regular sporting goer told me that um, if this rule had been in place when he was growing up, there's not a game of football from age 11 that he would have been able to attend. He would have been kicked out at every single game. And I think that applies to lots of Australians. Um, it, it, I mean, I really, how do we propose to enforce this on a um, widespread scale? Are we going to have um, monitors sitting in every second seat um, at the footy, um, checking what people are saying and booting them out if they bag the umpire? I mean, it's just really way over the top. Yeah, look, uh, this guy says he was really careful in the words that he chose, Carolyn, because he said, look, there were kids around, so I was careful I wasn't swearing. And there are some supporter groups who are now saying, can the AFL tell us what we can say and what we can't say when we're in the crowd? Well, apparently you can't call an umpire a green maggot either, because that's what someone else said, another fan, and he got a three-game ban for that. Uh, uh, honestly, uh, w so we have a problem with people being green now or being maggots? What else, what else is on... Th this is just... Po it is political correctness gone mad. All right. Well, if I was really brave, I'd call you guys maggots and flogs, but I wouldn't dare do <laughs> it's that. It's offensive to insects. No, Don't that's that. right. Senator and Carolyn Marcus, thank you so much for coming on. You're welcome. Cheers, Carolyn Marcus and Senator James Patterson.